We're starting now with the second set of principles here. You'll find it on the second top line, emergence. And uh, we're going to cover five areas there. The main topic first on, on emergence and what that is. And then the four sub principles, concepts around self-organization, non-linearity and chaos. And then talking about transitions and tipping points and integrative levels. So let's jump into the first one here. It's principle number six, emergence. One of the key concepts, one of the core concepts in systems thinking and complexity, along with the one we just explored before this, which was holism and obviously closely interrelated. Uh, for me, a lot of the ideas around systems thinking don't make sense until we really understand this idea of emergence and um, why it's so important. So emergence is a term, uh, a very broad term that's used in the English language, um, but in different areas, also philosophy, art, science, and it describes how new phenomena, new properties, new features, uh, new whole systems emerge as we put more elementary parts together. So it, it yeah, it describes the process of interaction between elements uh, from which synergies um, create something new, and these synergies then add value to, to a combined organization, which gives rise to the, the emergence of macro-level structures and patterns that can't be observed in the subunits of the, um, of the organization. And there are many examples of this, um, the formation of hurricanes, social movements, traffic jams, the flocking of birds, scooting of fish, um, and the combination of cells into, into tissues and organs uh, that form biological creatures. Um, we can see that a organ um, like the heart or the lungs is a whole system in itself that's uh, in some way greater than the sum of its individual uh, cells or the digestive system in the body. It does things as a whole, processes food, in a way that none of those individual parts uh, could in isolation. They don't have scaled down properties of that uh, broader feature. Of course, consciousness is one of the big uh, examples here. How can we get this uh, experience of reality that we do from these simple neurons uh, interacting? Uh, we call that emergence, the way those neurons fire and a whole network series or organization of them uh, results in our uh, perception of, of memories and consciousness and so forth. So that's the idea of emergence. It's really uh, contrasted to reductionism. It's all about what happens um, as things combine um, in synergistic ways. So it's kind of looking from the bottom up um, in, in terms of those individual uh, parts and how they interact, give rise to new patterns of organization, contrast with reductionism, uh, that's breaking things down to understand those parts and reductionism will never be able to help us understand emergent phenomena. And we see that uh, quite a bit in our world. Um, things like in biology, biology is supposed to be the study of life, uh, but we seem to forget about that whole idea of life when we study biology. It seems to be this and this kind of exercise of breaking things down to understand their, 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 their cells and their molecules and um, you know metabolic pathways and molec and um, you know ultimately atoms and so forth. So um, that's a reductionist approach. We haven't got very far in better understanding what life really is and why it is. Um, whereas emergence and systems thinking, uh, it talks a lot about living systems and uh, will help us uh, understand a lot better why things are the way they are and um, those larger, broader. Uh, patterns and processes such as life instead of just understanding the building blocks that constitute them. So that's the idea of emergence. It's a very powerful uh, and important concept. Without it, without it, then the reductionist uh, paradigm would work just fine. If there was no emergence of, uh, if the whole was nothing but the sum of the parts, then reductionism would work fine. The idea that the whole is different in some way from some of its parts requires us to look at the whole and then we need then we need system thinking and holistic thinking. Um, and that's why this is such a core concept, along with the idea of holism that we explored last time.